Right, let's take a look at some antiderivatives of exponential functions. Um, so say we have something, the, the integral of e to the 5x dx. We actually have two choices here. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One is the way that I learned it, and I do it all the time. Um, the other is a way that uh, some of my students have done it in the past, and it, it's clearly a better way, but, uh, you know, you do what you learned. So uh, I'm going to start off, so two different ways. First way, I'm going to rewrite it, and I'm just going to show you uh, what I'm doing. So I have e to the... Um, 5x I'm going to make u, and then dx I'm going to have to substitute for. So I'd like to change the color of that just to remind myself to substitute in. Um, so u is equal to 5x, so then du is going to be 5dx. Um, and I have dx, so I want to uh, be able to substitute directly for that. So dx is 1 -fifth of du. So now I'm going to make my substitutions. So it's e to the u, and then for dx I'm substituting 1 -fifth du. And rearrange this so that I can easily integrate it. And the antiderivative e to the u is just e to the u, so this gives me 1 fifth e to the u, and then I've taken an antiderivative, so plus c. And then the original function was in terms of x, so let's go back to x. So 1 fifth e to the 5x plus c. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Um, put a box around that. Another way of doing it is this. So I'm going to, again, in purple, show you what u is equal to. So I'm going to make u be e to the 5x. So in doing that, I get u is e to the 5x, so I take derivatives, du is 5e to the 5x by the chain rule, um, dx, and then look at this, so I have e to the 5x in the original e to the 5x, I have a dx in the original I have a dx. Um, the only thing on the right hand side there that I don't have in the original is a 5, so I'm going to move it over to the other side and get 1 fifth du is e to the 5x dx, and now I'm going to actually substitute for e to the 5x dx and it's just going to give me 1 fifth du. So the integral of 1 fifth du, rearrange that, pulling out a constant, is 1 fifth the integral of du. The integral of du is just u. I've taken an antiderivative, so I put a plus c. And then I want my final answer to be in terms of u. And u was actually e to the 5x. So I get 1 fifth e to the 5x, and then plus c. Okay, so that's two ways of doing it. Uh, let's do another example. It's a little different. Not really, but... So I have 5... Uh, to the sine of x times cosine of x dx. And I'm going to do this using that second method. So uh, I'm going to make u be 5 to the sine of x. So usually when there's an exponential, a really good choice of u is to make u actually just equal the entire exponential. And so u is 5 to the sine of x. I'm actually going to need more room for du here. So that's 5 to the sine of x um, times natural log of 5, and then times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x, and then dx. Okay, so let's take a look at what we started with and what we now have. I have 5 to the sine of x, and that's in the original. I have a cosine of x, that's in the original. And then, obviously, dx. Um, the only thing on the right-hand side there that I don't have in the original is natural log of 5, so I'm going to move it over to the other side. So 1 over natural log of 5, du, is equal to all that stuff. And now I'm ready to just make substitution. So I get the integral of 1 over natural log of 5, du, uh, rearrange it, or pull out the constant again. It's kind of a theme here. Uh, the antiderivative of du is just u. So I get 1 over the natural log of 5 times u, took an antiderivative, so plus c. And then finally we want it all in terms of the original function, so go back to x's. So 5 to the sine of x, and then plus c. Alright, so that is uh, two examples really. I did uh, one of them two different ways, and uh, I think the second way is better. But uh, it's just not how I'm inclined to do it, but I think you should definitely do it. So I hope this was helpful, and good luck.